My name is Philip DeRoy. I work for the Town of Newmarket. At the Town of Newmarket, I am an emergency vehicle technician. I happen to be a master EVT and I work on fire trucks. Today we have a special guest which is E451. This fire truck here is very special in many ways. So let's go have a look at this truck today. Let's have a look inside the cab for a minute. So these fire trucks actually don't have any keys. There's just two switches over here that turn the fire truck on. And we have a Vista screen. There's one on the captain's side as well. And it shows you doors open and closed. So that's your screen for uh, message acknowledgement, headlights, dimmer. There's lots of things on this camera. Our cluster here also shows us that we have any codes or we can go through this to look at different things. It's like a regular car. It also has many safety features like stability control, ABS, traction control, very similar to a car. And it's a push button transmission, which is fully automatic. You just push neutral for obviously stop to put it in reverse or back to neutral or back to drive. This also is a communication to the transmission. So the transmission is not only a selector for what mode you want to be in reverse or forward, it also communicates to the transmission and will give you codes. It'll tell you what the oil life is at. It'll tell you what your filters are at and even the clutch, the clutches, if they're wearing or not. So that's a very informational session for the transmission. For the mechanics, we can just look at this every time we do a safety. We, do, we check the, uh, the oil life, if we need to change the oil on the uh, transmission or not, and we check for the filters and all that other stuff. We also have an Allison dock transmission uh, on the computer, and we can hook up through our OBD connection down below. So we can check all of the doors on the truck by clicking on the door jar menu. We can look at the other side of the truck, and we can look at the rear of the truck to see if any of the doors are open. And as you can see, we have a yellow door, that means it's open. We can go back to the home screen and that shows us that that door is open from the top view. Because when the firefighter who is driving gets in the truck and releases the parking brake and we have a door open, the red flashing light in the door and the alarms go off. Another thing that comes up on the screen is your seat belt. The seat the seat belts always have to be on or a red indicator on your Vista screen will also light up saying you don't have your seat belt on. All of these things are recorded so the firefighters want to be sure that they wear their seat belts. The recording of the seat belts is through the VDR, video data recorder. So anything that this truck does on the road, seat belts, lights are on, whether they were had their foot on the gas, foot on the brake, trans, where the transmission was, how fast they were going is all recorded on the VDR on this truck. We're going to put it in pump gear. This is an electronic valve which sends a signal to some air cylinders which changes it into pump. So once we get the OK to pump, it's all on the screen here. It says we're OK to pump. Pump is engaged. It is not there. The pump just went in and now we are going to put it in the transmission and to drive, to drive the pumps. So what happens is it disconnects the rear axle from the rear, from the gearbox and it goes into the pump instead, which is a transfer box. This particular fire truck is the first fire truck in Canada with a SAM system. Century York Fire was the first one to have it. This SAM system is a tablet and it works, st SAM stands for Scene Apparatus Management. So right now, this system automatically opens up the tank to pump and it also refills the tank through a line that comes from the pump itself. We don't have the tank fill open, but we can open it if we want to. So right now the pump is running. It's running water through the pump and keeping it cool. So at any time when a firefighter wants one of the lines to be used, he can take a line. So the firefighter can take a draft from the hydrant. He has to open up the MIV, which is the master intake valve. 
and it comes it automatically opens the valve so it takes a suction and the primer automatically sucks the water and the air out of the line to create no bubbles into the water system it's fully automatic so the SAM system always knows when it has enough water for the firefighters to fight the fires if the firefighters open too many valves, the SAM system will say that there's not enough water supply to support the lines that are going out. So this system is a safety feature for the firefighters. If they do open one of the lines and it realizes that the system knows that it's too much, it will take a little bit out of everybody's line to keep water supply to everybody. So this is a primer if you want to use it yourself in manual mode. So SAM also has a manual mode just in case something goes wrong with SAM and he's, he's off for the day, we can put it into manual mode. We can say yes, we want to switch to manual mode. And then what we can do is we can open up a valve ourselves. So we can look at this one. This is the left front discharge. So we look on left front, we can open the valve by just touching the buttons. Hose charging. And then we are going to open the valve a little bit. We're not going to open it up too much because we don't want to do it because we don't have a line on it, but we'll close the valve again. And it's valve closed. We have a throttle control so we can turn the throttle up and down when we're pumping water. We also have a throttle control here to bring the idle, idle up and down. There's many ways that this can work, in manual mode or through the SAM system. So what we're going to go is go back to the menu. Activate SAM auto flow, yes. So now we're back into the SAM system again. This fire truck also has many other things. It has a generator on it. It has a foam system. It has a monitor. We have a command light with the controls on the side. We also have a remote for the command light, which I can go get and we can go up top and have a look at how that all works. It used to be that there were little fold down steps, but they realized that the firefighters needed a, a proper ladder to climb up to the back of the truck. So we have this Zyco pull out ladder and it's a access to the top of the truck. We also have automatic hose bed doors. We just push a button and the it's fully automatic with electric or hydraulic cylinders that lift the hose bed doors. So up on the top of the dunnage area, we have our monitor, we have a command light, this is our generator, and we have the tank, the water tank. We can open this up and we can fill it this way. Most times they fill it from the actual pump area. And we also have a foam tank. Those, this water tank holds about 500 gallons and the foam tank holds about 30 gallons of foam. The foam system is so that the water tension of the water surface is tighter and it doesn't slide off of whatever is burning quicker. That's why they use foam. We also have the command light and what we're going to do is we're going to bring that command light up at the moment and show you what it is. This command light is a light for the evening time or the darkness when firefighters have to go somewhere and it's not light enough for them to use and it's fully wireless remote control. We can go anywhere, we can go to where we need it light the most and we can shine the light to that area or we can just stand, stand down below and there's also a wired remote on the truck. We also have an auto park so we push one button and the it, lights will shut off and will automatically park by itself. The more light that they have on a fire scene in the evening time, the safer it is for a firefighter. You could actually trip over something you can't see, but with extra lights like this, it would uh, give them the opportunity to be better lit and to see what they're doing. There's also scene lights on the sides of the fire trucks that are about the equivalent to one of these lights on this command light. So there's, I believe, two lights on the back, one on either side of the, or sorry, two on either side of the truck as well. We also have a big brow light, which is a bar that goes right across the whole top of the cab that lights up as well. So if they're on scene and they need to monitor, the monitor is a nozzle which is on a swivel. It can go up and down and swivel around and shoot water. So let's say they have a garage fire that's over there. We will deploy the monitor. There's a little red light that tells me that it's deploying and the monitor will go up. Once we have the monitor up, we'll back away 
we'll use our remote, we'll have a look at where the monitor is, and we will see up there it's turning. We're going to put it down a little bit now and shoot it out to wherever we need it to be. They, what they're using this as one example right now, if they get on scene to a garage fire and they know the garage door is open, they can actually shoot water into the garage before they even have to pull any hoses. That's one of the attacks that they can do and it has been proven that it works very well. So sometimes we have to service this. So we open up this door and inside here is where all the magic happens. As you can see, that's a smart foam. We have all of the valves, which is right here, is a big ball valve. And the ball turns and closes, and then it opens up and allows the water to flow through. All of the electronics are right on top of each valve, and there's cables that go to all of the controllers. We have foam system, which is right here. It's an electric motor, which turns very similar to a pressure washer pump and it pumps with little pistons the foam into the water manifold which is right here and it allows the foam to go into whichever valve we want open. The big ones that go up to the top obviously go to that big monitor that's sitting up on top what we what we energized and showed you in the beginning. We have the other ones that go down those ones over there they go to the cross lays which is the hoses that run from one side to the other. The reason why they're called cross lays is that you can either pull it from one side of the truck or the other side of the truck to attack the fire. We also want this in the winter time, this compartment to obviously stay warm because there's water. We have big fans and heaters that run off of the coolant from the engine and they have fans and keep this area warm in the winter time. So here we have where the firefighter sits. This is an SCBA bracket. The cylinder is where the firefighter would breathe in a fire. What the cylinder is, they have a lever here at the bottom of the seat. They pull on the lever, and if you look here, you can see the Securo pops up. Then the firefighter will lean forward and stand up with his pack already on. Sometimes we have to worry about these. These seats fold up, so, and we have to repair this. There's latches and levers that we have to make sure that work properly all times. So what we've just done is we went inside the cab and make sure that there's no articles that can fall when we lift up the cab because they actually can fall through the window at the front of the truck. That's happened before, so we always check that, that it won't happen again. We are going to turn on the master switch. That will give us power so that we can energize the pump to lift the cab up. On this side, we're going to open up the pump house door and we have a cab tilt compartment. We'll open that up and we're going to grab the controller up and down. So let's lift the cab up. As we're lifting the cab up, an alarm will always sound when the cab goes up and down to alert everybody that they know the cab is going up or down. That's the safety bar. We want to make sure that that's in place before we go underneath and work on the engine or the transmission. We just let made sure that the safety stand is down so that when we work on the truck, if the cylinders fail, it will hold that cab up for us when we work on it. This is where we work on the engine. We have power steering reservoirs. We have, this is obviously a Cummins engine, 450 horsepower. We have an Allison transmission. It is a six speed automatic which we saw the shifter that we just pushed the buttons to change the tra transmissions. Uh, we have a cooling system, we have our air intake with our turbocharger, AC compressor. Another thing about this truck is that it has a cooler for the engine. Water from the pump comes from the pump and runs up to the engine through these two lines and it's a coolant cooler so that it keeps the engine cool when you're pumping for a long time. All of our fire trucks have six batteries. There's three on this side and three on the other side. We also have the diesel exhaust fluid in here as well. The cab lift cylinder, sorry, cab, the cab lift pump is on the inside the other side battery box. We can have a quick look inside to see what it's like. 
There's also a fuse box in here. They are AGM batteries. And again, there's six. It is a 12 volt system. They are hooked up parallel. There's one other thing about these new fire trucks. The frames are all galvanized. The problem with, gal with non-galvanized frames is that the rust would get between the two frame rails and it would rust and the frame rails would spread apart called uh, rust jacking. And that would actually take a fire truck out of service because it's not uh, strong enough for service anymore. This is a standard feature now on all Spartan chassis. Fire builders pick up the chassis from Spartan and then they build their boxes um, and pump houses to match whatever you require. Every fire truck is a custom truck because you can pick different lights, different pumps. Uh, we actually have two styles of pumps. We have hail pumps and water is pumps. You can pick so many different lights, different manufacturers. So that's where everything you check all the boxes off for what you would like to have for your fire truck when you build them. I'm involved in doing all of those specs and building the fire trucks for Central York Fire Services. So this is the cable that we pulled to pull the safety yellow bar away from the cylinder. So this is the crosslay where the hose hooks up to the pump. The pump can bring the water out and shoot it this way. So you can pull the crosslay out this way or you can pull the crosslay out this way. And that's uh, the reason why this is a crosslay either side. So each fire truck with Century York Fire is custom made. Every light is selected. Every light is different. There's lights on the side of the truck. There's lights on the top of the truck. There's different manufacturers. And also something about fire trucks that you may not know is when a fire truck is going down the road, it has blue and red flashing lights, but it also has white flashing lights. Once the fire truck gets to the scene, he pulls the parking brake and the white lights go out. So if you're driving down the road and all you see is red and, and blue flashing lights, that means the truck is stopped and it's on scene. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you've learned something about fire trucks today. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos to come. Thanks for watching and have a great day.